Cozy Grove, I love you. It's got the same themes and gameplay loop as Animal Crossing, where you befriend neighbours, collect things on your island, craft, fish, and create your own homely nook. However, and now hear me out on this one, Cozy Grove has also improved on Animal Crossing New Horizons in a lot of ways, and added its own tweaks that make it, in my opinion, superior to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, although this is purely my own personal preference, over the course of this video, I'm going to show you why you should tip those toes of yours into Cozy Grove's forest if you're a fan of Animal Crossing. So, here's 13 things Cozy Grove does better than Animal Crossing. The big thing that makes Cozy Grove absolutely shine is your neighbours. They're dead, and I love them. These ghostly bears and birds you'll meet during your time in Cozy Grove have their own story, personality, and mystery about why they're stuck as a ghost and can't pass over into the afterlife. You have to patiently help them out day by day to get to the root of their deaths, earning their trust, and getting to know them better day by day. Animal Crossing doesn't really have this personality progression in its characters, or personalised, extensive quests for each neighbour who joins your island, so the characters can sometimes feel a bit flat. Ghost friends in Cozy Grove, however, have this hidden depth, one which brings them to life. Or dead. Or undeath? I don't know. It makes me care about them a little bit more, and that's what matters. I forget things quite easily when they're not written down, and that goes double for Animal Crossing, where, with all the stuff you can do, it's easy to lose track of what particular job you're doing at any one moment. Which is why I adore Cozy Grove's simple way of keeping track of your quests. An icon in the top right-hand corner reminds you A, what you're collecting, and B, how far you are to collecting enough of it. Hidden all around the map, these items are either underground or in leaf piles or just hidden behind things, and you get a small clue about where to look for each of them. Completing these quests isn't meant to be taxing or challenging, it's meant to be relaxing. And with this minimalist quest log, that's exactly what it is. Animal Crossing's way of telling you you're progressing is by unlocking different buildings or the ability to buy different items or ticking off Nook Miles. Cozy Grove has the same kind of Nook Miles system with a tweak that I'll get onto later. And in addition to all the stuff I just mentioned, it has actual levelling up too. Feed enough spirit logs to Flamey, your hot friend, but not in that way, and you'll level up as a spirit scout which lends a sense of progression to Cozy Grove that I find Animal Crossing New Horizons sometimes lacks. As you level up, more ghosts appear and the island changes too, yet another thing that I'll go on to later. For now, allow me to paint you a picture of how beautiful Cozy Grove's island is, which is coming up right about now. Cozy Grove's island is far more diverse than Animal Crossing New Horizons. There, I said it. Each area is tailored to the ghost floating around there, from the rampant bear forest to a postal depot to a cafe full of delicious treats. Cozy Grove doesn't stop there with the delightful, unique buildings and quirks, though, as every time you help a ghost out, its area grows ever more detailed and personal. So, the other day, I came back to the postal depot to find a statue that definitely wasn't there before. This is what keeps me coming back to Cozy Grove. I want to see how the island ebbs and changes with each day and each errand I run for my ghost friends. More than that, I feel like the more of their area you uncover, the more hints you get about what's keeping them in Cozy Grove. Plus, just look at how beautiful each section is. Cozy Grove respects your time, goddammit, and I am wholeheartedly invested in that. In Animal Crossing, it's hard to tell when you're done unless you impose your own limit on what you want to do with each day. In Cozy Grove, Flamey makes it very clear that you've done all you can do, story, levelling up, and errand-wise in Cozy Grove by telling you to come back tomorrow. You can't perpetually procrastinate and chat to the ghosts either, as they'll run out of dialogue, but instead of repeating themselves and breaking your immersion, 
you're gently told that they're busy and you should come back later. It's considerate, gentle, and I adore it. End of. Hidden objects are a big part of Cozy Grove, as that's the form your errands take when you're helping out the ghosties. Clues are there in the quest log, which narrow down where you've got to look for them, but it can be tricky tracking them down if you don't have spirit lamps filling the world with colour. Cozy Grove's green scale makes it tricky to separate special items from world decor, so to help you along, you can pay a small fee to Charlotte Pine to show you where the object is to ensure you're not left completely alone thereby ensuring that you avoid a dose of frustration, and in Cozy Grove's chill world, you certainly don't want that. I didn't know how else to describe this, but you are a caretaker in Cozy Grove, and that goes beyond helping out the spectral grizzlies and birds. Feeding these imps and nurturing your pets and plants not only feels good, but adds intrigue to the world of Cozy Grove. For example, I have no idea what these different imp expressions mean, but right now I know I can feed them, so maybe at some point I'll learn what these little spirits are up to. And I love seeing these hearts and leaves go up in my pets and plants. There's simply nothing in Animal Crossing of this ilk, and it's really heartening to nurture a small thing for yourself. Which leads me very nicely onto the next point. Decorating in Cozy Grove isn't something you do on a whim. It's its own little puzzle, as you have to carefully orient your decorating around your pets and plants' likes and dislikes to maximise their happiness, which nets you more essence, a valuable and rare crafting material. This incentivizes you to craft items you normally wouldn't, and lends a bit more purpose to decorating than Animal Crossing, which in turn means you get to experience more of the game through finding said resources, etc. And, to be honest, getting love hearts from a gothic raven is well worth all that effort. When you complete milestones, donate things to Captain Bill Weathersnout's Book of Secrets, and fulfil errands for ghosts, you get either gemstones or old coins as a reward, alongside some other items. Old coins are used to buy things, gemstones are used to craft things. At the start of the game, you might be a bit strapped for coins, but the game changer arrives when you befriend Francesca Duclaw, who recycles items for you. She can turn gemstones into old coins, so you're never really left without the ability to buy stuff from this merchant. And Cozy Grove knows that, so after the first store upgrade, it will cost 200,000 old coins to beef up Mr. Kit's stock even more. It's never too easy to get what you want in Cozy Grove, so the recycling ability is managed pretty well, I reckon, and there's a few less steps there than there is for changing Nook Miles into Bells. Thanks, Francesca. God, I love this bit so much. You can quickly skip through dialogue to get to the point ASAP. I'm especially overflowing with gratitude when it comes to donating things to Captain Bill Weather Snout's Book of Secrets, as you can skip the preamble and get right down to it. Whereas with Blathers, it takes a little bit longer to go through the whole rigmarole. This is fairly self-explanatory, but I really enjoy the fact that there's a meter that shows you how far you're about to cast your rod. Ian, I can hear you laughing from here. So, this is my bad. When I mentioned decorating earlier and pets and plants having certain likes and dislikes, what I failed to mention was how easy it is to figure out which objects float their boat, or asimatus forms, or whatever. Hover over the item in your backpack and there's a list of qualities each item has, so you know exactly which decor pleases your critters. Different bits of the island change depending on the ghost haunting them. You got that by now. With so many ghosts to unveil, the island itself expands to accommodate these spectral super friends. Look around the edges of the island and you can see the sunken bits of cozy grove that will emerge the more you help out its current inhabitants. It's not just forests and beaches that rise up from the depths, but odd little details too. 
like this pedestal in the forest and this massive seat on the beach. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, it's up to you to change your island through terraforming, and apart from that, it doesn't change on its own, meaning it can feel a little bit rote after a while. Like I mentioned with the imps, the ghosts' stories, and the pets, this just keeps the intrigue of Cozy Grove alive. There's always more to uncover, quite literally. And that's 13 things Cozy Grove does better than Animal Crossing. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to Eurogamer. And follow us on Instagram at Team Eurogamer for daily updates about our YouTube channel and our videos and streams. We have a new video out every single day, so there's always something to watch. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and play more Cozy Grove. I thrive on being predictable. See you next time.